in our contemporary situation, we know there are heretics who tamper with the Bible. For, for example, the Jehovah's Witnesses and other cults who alter the text. Uh, why, why is it we can't appreciate the fact that that must have also existed in the early church? Uh, the, the one problem with your question is that you're lumping them all in as church fathers. The church fathers were orthodox men. And the heretics, uh, we don't call them church fathers, we call them heretics. The church fathers who addressed heresy in the early church, specifically, more than other things, the ones who really, like Irenaeus and, and others who actually made it their task to answer heretics, they're called heresiologists. And <clears throat> Eusebius gives us a lot of information from them and about the heretics and who the heretics were and who the Orthodox fathers who addressed them were. But yeah, there's a whole array of them. Marcion is the most celebrated that we know altered the Greek New Testament in a systematic way. The Gnostics did. I, I gave you an example of Valentinus last night. Now the early fathers all, there's nothing ambiguous about this, they all recognized Valentinus as a heretic, as one of the founding fathers of one of the schools of Gnosticism. Now it would seem to me that if he presented an alternate reading to the Gospel of John, other than the one that's found in the majority of the manuscripts, if he's the earliest source for that reading, it seems to me that on that basis alone we ought to be very dubious about accepting his variant. And, and Bergon was very quick to point out that those people who want to put in the prologue of John a phrase, the only begotten God in the bosom of the Father, they're returning to Gnosticism and to a reading from Valentinus because his is the earliest source for that reading. Well, no one listened to him. Uh, Hills came along and repeated what Burgon said and gave more evidence showing that it was a Gnostic reading. No one listened to him. It continued to appear. It was in the New American Standard. It was in the NIV. It, it was in the New English Bible. It was in the Revised Standard Version. I wrote, finally, an entire essay on that textual variant, pointing out that Valentinos was, in fact, the author of it. And I delivered my essay before the New Testament text criticism section of the Society of Biblical Literature. And uh, even Bart Ehrman, in his book, The Orthodox Corruption of Scripture, admits that that is a heretical alteration of the text. He just happens to think it came from a different source other than Valentino's. But he says it's a, an erroneous reading, but still it's in the, our conservative Bibles. So what has changed is not the evidence. What has changed is our lack of appreciation of who the good guys are and the bad guys. It's all become rather blurred, I'm afraid. And that's where the problem is.